Hi, my name is Joshua Riazzi, and I'm the executive chef at Kids Can Cook, a Boston nonprofit cooking school where we give kids tuition free cooking classes after school uh, for a series of eight weeks at a time. Some of the dishes that we make are very classic American cuisine. Uh, one of the, the really great fun ones that we like to make with the kids is pulled pork. And our pulled pork, since we're not using a smoker, we're using more traditional cooking techniques that you would have in your home, cook, home kitchen is, uh, is really a great recipe to try to duplicate at home. So to start this dish, there are really two main parts here. We've got a seasoning mix of citrus, some uh, citrus zest here. I use oranges, limes. The second portion to the real bulk of the flavor is in our dry rub. And this really needs to be quite flavorful because we're going to rub this onto the exterior of the pork shoulder, but it needs to permeate everything. There needs to be enough seasoning there to really season the entire bulk of the meat. So what I've got in this, in this mix is all whole uh, whole spices. We've got black pepper, fennel, coriander. There's also cumin seed in there, and a little bit of a little bit of cinnamon. For this task, I break out a mortar and pestle, very traditional cooking utensil that allows us to really break those those spices up with just some brute force here. But it gives us the best flavor, the freshest flavor on these spices. Really allows the the scent to come out. So what we're doing is just mashing this up until we have a nice firm powder. And you can see what we have is a little bit of a powder here. And like I said, it's not ultra fine and it doesn't really need to be. Now that we have that spice mix here, we're going to add a few more ingredients that don't necessarily need to be processed in the mortar. One that is going to assimilate our smoky flavor, because with a good pulled pork, you're going to have a series of flavors. You're going to have some saltiness, some good acidity coming from the citrus, and later on we'll add a, a, little, bit of, um, a little bit of vinegar. You're also going to get smokiness and kind of a sweetness, and that's going to come from our smoked paprika. And this smoked paprika is basically like the paprika or cayenne pepper that you have at home. This is a sweet version, but they do make a spicy one if you want to kind of kick it up a bit. Um, and it really, really, you can tell immediately when you open it, it really smells smoky. And, and they roast the peppers over a, you know, in a, in a smoker before they grind them up. And that gives us that smoky flavor at home without having to spend hours outside at a smoker. So it's a little bit of a cheap move, but it, it definitely adds a great, great scent to it, a great flavor to it. So in this spice mix, we've got our smoked paprika, our fennel seed, our coriander, our black pepper also our cumin, and I'm going to add now the salt. And you want to liberally salt this because, like I said, this flavoring needs to really permeate the entire pork shoulder. For our mix here of citrus, I'm just going to demonstrate how we get it to that point. And there's several different ways to do this. One way is called supreming, where you just clip the bottom and the top off of your citrus. And this works with all citrus, whether it's a lemon, a lime, an orange, or a grapefruit. Now that it stands on its end and it's not wobbling around, you're just going to use a knife to delicately peel off the skin there until you don't see any more white. I've got a little bit on the bottom here, so I'm just going to go down and clean that up a touch. And then you just rotate this citrus around until you've, so you've got the whole thing cleaned. And basically, you've got just the good, good, sweet citrus left like so. And this works really great if you need to juice something, if you want to puree or, or blend something with citrus in it. You're not getting all the pithiness, all the bitterness from the, from the, uh, the white in there. Now, we are going to use the skins for some of this flavoring. And there's two ways to do this as well. One way is to use your knife if you want to practice some knife skills here and just slice off as best you can, keeping your fingers out of the way. Slice off as much of that white as you can. That's, again, the, bit, the bitter pith. And we don't want to get too much of that into our final product until you have just basically the skin there. And you can slice that up a couple times. Since this is going to cook for about four to six hours, your pieces of, of fruit don't need to be all that small. They're actually going to break down throughout the cooking process. And w with this orange, or basically just the, the pulp of the inside, we're going to chop that into pieces as well. But again, since it's going to cook for so long, we don't need to chop it down into very small bits. We're going to compost the rest of that because we don't quite need all of it. Now, the second way to do this is with a, a really handy tool called a microplane. Basically, you're just going to zest the outside. Now, I have a microplane with large gaps on it. It's a little bit bigger than the one you might use to grate cheese. And this is perfect for this, for this use because what you get are, are larger pieces that are going to take a while to break down in the oven with the rest of the spices. So that's another good way to do that. Now we want to add 
the core of our flavor to this mix with some more fresh ingredients, a habanero pepper, now very, very spicy pepper. So notice as I'm cutting it, I'm pushing all that cut part away. I'm holding the part of the pepper that hasn't been cut so that I don't get any of that juice on my fingers. That juice is really spicy. This is one of the hottest peppers out there, so you don't want to be touching your eyes or anything like that. I've got gloves as well, which you can put on and, and uh, definitely protect yourself that way. So I can cut this into somewhat large chunks again. I'm just going to gather this up, put that with our citrus. Again, that's going to break down throughout the cooking process so it can be kept in nice large bits there. Next thing is garlic, and I just clipped the end of the clove off, and I'm going to chop this into some nice sized pieces. Now the other key ingredients here, sage is one of them. I almost always put sage in with this pulled pork. And the way that I prepare my sage for this is just to take the leaves and cut the leaves into bits and keep the stem out of it. I'm going to mix that in there too. I've also got rosemary. Now rosemary, the stem is really, really kind of woody. So you don't really want to use the stem. You want to just pull the leaves off of that. Get yourself a nice bundle of the leaves and chop those up. Again, everything can be nice and coarse. If you want to go the extra mile and, and make a powder out of this, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll come out just as good, but this works well as well. So now that I have this spice mix all together, we've got the garlic, the citrus, the fresh herbs, and the habanero in there. We're just about ready to go over to our pork and start to season this up. Now, one thing I like to do before I handle the pork, because it is a raw meat, is I'll put gloves on. I'll bring this over. Now, first thing here, we've got several layers of foil. I've got, count them, five pieces of foil there, and the real purpose for that is to keep all of the juices inside and also to help create a, a nice, a nice uh, mellow cooking area for this where everything can kind of steam together and roast together, and you're really protecting it from the raw heat of the oven with those several packages. It's all about going low and slow here. Like I said, four to six hours in the oven. Two things you want to do is one, make sure that it's got a little bit of protection from the heat, and two, you want to actually use a lower heating, uh, lower heat. So you're going to cook this at about 225 to 250, depending on the type of oven and, and how hot your oven gets, and you know, if it's a convection oven, you probably want to use that 225. Now what I'm going to take is our spice mix here and rub that onto the skin first. With a dry rub, you really don't just want to season it like this and let it be. You actually want to get your hands in there and press that into the meat to make sure that you're getting as much in there as possible. What we've used here is a pork shoulder. It's called a Boston butt. It's actually the shoulder portion of a pork, and this is a really nice pork shoulder too. You don't need to go with a curabuto or something like that, something really expensive. You just want to make sure that it's a fresh pork shoulder and nothing that's been frozen for too long. It comes out just really much nicer if, uh, if you're using a fresh, fresh pork product. And now we're ready to start adding our, the rest of our ingredients. And for this, it doesn't necessarily need to be rubbed on and coated the same way because as the citrus cooks and the pork cooks, the juices are going to combine and it's going to surround this whole pork shoulder. So you just want to make sure that they're in there, kind of right on top. Sometimes I like to pick it up and roll it around, but this is actually going to work just as good as anything else. So you've got your garlic evenly dispersed, your herbs evenly dispersed, and the citrus evenly dispersed. The next thing here is to create this parcel, and you want to make sure, like I said, that everything gets enclosed so that the juices stay in there and so that there's no gaps or anything like that. So the first move I do is I bring it together, I crimp it in the middle, the ends here are still open, so I'll just make sure that I pull this up so that any juices gather and they don't have anywhere to leak out, and I'll crimp that around right together with that. Same thing on this side. I'll pull this up a bit, I'll crimp that together. Now I can turn this 90 degrees and I'll do the same thing with the next piece of foil. And basically we're just creating this. So now we've got our pork that's ready to go in the oven. On a nice sheet pan, you always want to have something underneath it to catch any juices that may escape. You want to make sure that you know, the, the ribs on the bottom of the oven don't catch that foil and rip them. This is ready to go in the oven at about 225 to 250 for about four to six hours. Now, if everything held properly, we've got a little well of juices in the bottom, and that's going to be all of the juice from the actual pork shoulder, some of the liquid from the citrus that we had in there, and also... Um, and also all of those nice herbs and, and spices. So what we're gonna do is use those juices 
to make a quick sauce for this pork shoulder as well. Really want to hone that sauce at the very end and balance out all of the flavors. So, oh, this just looks nice and delicious. You can tell what I mean by pulling the pork meat apart. Basically just by brushing at it with the fork, it's already falling apart, it's so tender. And you can see those juices coming out at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is remove this pork best I can and take all of these juices and put them into a pan and you can put the garlic in there and any whole spices or zest that's still in there that's really gonna make for even a, a better experience at the end and I want to make sure I get all of those juices from all of these pieces of, of foil here get all of those in there we're gonna rest the pork in that after it's uh, after it's been pulled and that's really what's gonna bring all of the flavors together I've got a mix here of a little bit of uh, cider vinegar and rice wine vinegar again. Those sweet and sour kind of acidic flavors are really what we're playing with and really what we're balancing throughout this whole thing and we're adding in just more layers of flavor with some fresh herbs and more fresh sage here at the end. Just gonna chop that up. It doesn't need to be too small as we boil it. It's gonna break up a bit. And we're not so much reducing this on the stove as we are just letting it all simmer, letting the flavor from the sage come out, letting the vinegar cook in with the rest of the juices, and we're gonna taste it along the way to balance the flavor. If we think that it needs more salt, we'll add that pepper or anything else, we'll add that just before we add the pork back into it. This is really gonna be where the bulk of the flavoring comes from, and we're gonna let the pork sit in that for as long as we need to. It can actually last once we're shredded and in that sauce and cool down, it can actually last for four or five days. So it makes a really, really great, um, flavoring mix here. We're just going to throw that on the stove. Low to medium heat and let that simmer for a couple minutes. In the meantime we can bring our pork shoulder just nice to that shredded point with a fork and you can see how delicately this happens. You don't need to shred it down to the point to where it's just threads but if you chunk it up a bit and that's going to be ideal. Great. Now that we've got all of this meat shredded in a nice pile. We're just waiting for that sauce to come up to a simmer and as soon as that's done we can add this all back in there and, and give it a nice taste to make sure that our flavors are where, they are where we want them to be. And again the flavors here are very pungent, really really strong. I get a little bit of that habanero that we added before but it's not so much so that this really is making a spicy pork shoulder. It's just helping to round out all those other strong flavors. Putting a little salt in, adding, I like mine to have a nice black pepper taste to it as well. And while this is still warm, we can add the rest of this meat. And again with this, you want to let this sit in the juice for a little while. You don't want to eat it right off. Not that it's not delicious, it really is, but it gains so much flavor just by sitting here for a while using a bulky roll here, something that's toasted up a bit so that it can handle all the nice juices from, from our pulled pork. And you do want to get some of those juices right on top here. And the bun soaks that in. It's just, oh. This is the epitome of summertime eating right here. Now we've got some of the coleslaw. And traditionalists will put it right on top of the sandwich just like this so that the dressing and the freshness of that coleslaw kind of breaks into the rest of the, uh, the richness from the pulled pork. I'm gonna put a little bit on the side too, just because I like it so much. And you can use a little hot sauce on this. Sometimes I put in a little uh, cilantro in just to freshen up the flavors, and there you have it, a really, really delicious summertime treat, a pulled pork sandwich that'll impress everyone at your barbecue.